Okay, uh, um, we actually have already started the discussion, but I uh, still want to introduce our panelists. Some of them don't need an introduction, you know them very well, like Jerome Mosher, who is a resident representative of the IMF office here. Jerome is uh, almost a year in Ukraine, right? So you know the country pretty well now, I guess. <laughs> Okay, uh, next to, Jer uh, to Jerome, I have um, Mr. Um, Jose Ramon Leon Lora, who is the first counselor and a head of the um, Economic Cooperation and Regional Development uh, section of the EU delegation. And uh, next to uh, Mr. Leon Lora, uh, I have a David Miller, who is a counselor for economic affairs of the U.S. Embassy. And then we have uh, Vladimir Lavrinchuk, who is a very famous uh, banker in Ukraine. And if another person doesn't need to be introduced, I think. He runs uh, the biggest European bank uh, uh, here and will probably give us an alternative view of what's going on in the banking system. So, but uh, I would like to start this uh, discussion and the, the name of the panel is dealing with the uh, macroeconomic challenges and definitely my first question will be to Jerome, what do you think is, a, is the biggest challenge, you know, that is, you probably identified during the mission visit and uh, you can say, uh, to tell us uh, what, what actually are the next probably steps after the staff level agreement is reached, what do you expect from the government to do? Uh, before the, the board of, um, of directors is going to give a final approval to, to the program. Um, so, first of all, maybe uh, let me say a few words about the assessment of uh, the economic situation. And then uh, I will tell you a bit about the, the next steps uh, as far we, as we see them at the moment. Uh, on the economic situation, uh, you mentioned what is, uh, you asked what is the biggest challenge. Uh, we, we have a, a number of uh, challenges to, to address in the economy. Uh, those challenges are basically macroeconomic imbalances that we have been uh, seeing uh, accumulating o over the years. Uh, we had, uh, until the beginning of this year, a pegged an overvalued exchange rate, uh, which basically drove the current account deficit to, uh, to close to 9% of GDP. Uh, with a lack of competitiveness and a stagnation of uh, both exports and GDP. We had a level of, uh, of reserves uh, which uh, fell to, uh, to, to a very low two months of imports. Uh, we had a fiscal deficit uh, which was close to 4.5% uh, of GDP. Uh, to this, you, you would have to, uh, to add um, a quasi-fiscal <coughs> deficit in uh, the energy sector, in after gas in particular. And basically, uh, we had a, um, a budget for 2014, as it was uh, initially adopted at the end of, uh, or proposed at the end of last year, uh, which, uh, which was uh, basically uh, unsustainable and, uh, and based on, um, on optimistic macroeconomic assumptions at the time. Uh, that, that meant that uh, basically, uh, in our assessment, the, the combined uh, budget uh, deficit and the deficit of NAFTA gas would have been, uh, would have been basically uh, over 10% of GDP, which, uh, which with the current account deficit like, uh, like we have is uh, just uh, not, uh, not possible. This is yeah. probably without, without corrective measures, I guess. Without correcting measures, absolutely. Um, so this is uh, the situation that, uh, that basically emerged. Uh, in many ways, uh, this, is not, uh, this is not a surprise. I mean, the, we have seen these imbalances building up uh, over time. And it has been a uh, long-standing part of our advice, of our advice to, uh, to correct these imbalances. Um, now, of course, there was uh, 
there was uh, an intense uh, economic and uh, political turbulence at the beginning of this year. Uh, and uh, we have to commend the, the authorities for, for achieving uh, stabilization and, uh, in many ways in very difficult circumstances. Uh, we, so now turning to, to the different steps uh, in, uh, in our negotiations, uh, we initially sent uh, what we call a fact-finding mission, basically to, to assess the economic situation uh, assess the uh, and quantify the potential uh, financing needs. We received excellent cooperation uh, from the very beginning, which has uh, really helped uh, in uh, accelerating the process and uh, allowing us to uh, to start negotiations on uh, on a new uh, standby arrangement uh, with Ukraine. We issued a press release on March 27, where we indicated that we uh, basically reached uh, what we call a staff level agreement. Uh, a staff, uh, so it's an agreement basically reached with the authorities. It's uh, subject, uh, as you as you mentioned, to approval by uh, by the IMF management and the executive board of the IMF, uh, which uh, comprises all of our member countries. Uh, the Consideration by the uh, executive board is expected in uh, in April. Uh, basically, uh, following the uh, the authorities' adoption of a strong and uh, comprehensive package of uh, of actions to to stabilize the economy and also to create the conditions for for sustained growth. Uh, we have, of course, an uh, internal procedure that also we, we have to respect. So we are trying to move uh, to move as fast as possible. But uh, uh, it is important that uh, basically first uh, first action is taken, uh, and then we'll have uh, a consideration uh, by the board uh, with a report uh, that will be uh, reviewed by the board. That's mm -hmm. basically where where we are. You have you have several uh, identified several areas uh, uh, that, that need to be dealt with, uh, including the fiscal uh, policy, energy policy. Uh, quite little time passed after after your uh, after the mission visit, but uh, how do you assess the government's progress uh, along these uh, lines? Was there a progress? Was there a good progress, or was there was no progress? What is your general assessment? Um, I mean, we, we generally feel that there is a, a strong uh, reform momentum in, uh, in Ukraine at the moment. Uh, we would like to, to build on this reform momentum to, uh, to basically both stabilize the economy and create conditions uh, for, for higher growth. Um, the authorities have been very committed to, uh, to make the, the relevant uh, changes. Uh, as, I, as I said, we uh, we are looking forward to uh, to the reforms that will be put in place. Uh, so far, the commitment has been uh, has been uh, strong, and uh, as I said, also we we have received excellent cooperation. So you, you still expect them to deliver, right? Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you.